Hello, this is Bill Quadzi. Welcome to a Rivals of Ixalan sealed event. This is a five round event. It's a, a PPTQ and the goal is to go four and one or better. Now I figured I'd record a Rivals of Ixalan sealed. It's kind of a, an important format for the RPTQ season if you've qualified for that, but also just if you're looking to do uh, PPTQs online or offline and and so forth. Uh, it's good to know a bit about the format and I guess there are some Grand Prix coming up. So whatever the reason, it is nice to be familiar with the process and the process can sort of change based on the format. So we'll, we'll see about this. Now the first thing I like to do is see what power we have in our different rarities. Galta, very good. Azor, these are two big standouts. Seafloor Oracle could be good if you get lucky and open a synergistic pool with lots of merfolk, but it's not just raw power on its own. Then, Arterial Flow, double Lightning Strike, that's huge, as is double Reckless Rage. Rigging Runner is fine, again, it sort of depends on the speed of your deck. Freebooter is good. The spine back is definitely uh, a powerful payoff. And another little merfolk dude. All right, so once we look at this and some of our fixing, Sun Petal Grove, it'll be a good idea to go through uh, color by color. Now, one of my favorite cards to open is one we didn't open, which is Evolving Wilds. And that's going to limit how many colors we can go into. Didn't even get a Traveler's Amulet. So our best fixing is either going to be treasures, some green cards like New Horizons, and these two dual lands, uh, which share green. Anyway, white looks shallow, but if they're all really powerful, that won't matter. Sacrament, kind of a rare card that will make it into your deck in strange situations. Some of our cards are pretty good. Of course, you don't want to play a single Conquistador while playing two is totally fine. The rest of these cards are good. Three ways to lock down creatures, Divine Verdict, which is playable if not exciting, and then all the rest of our creatures are good. So 10 solid playables in white plus Azor and the Resplendent Griffin. So that is a solid stack here. Now let's take a look at blue, the obvious next color. Crashing Tide, Horn Swoggle, Sea Legs. Not, not as obvious power here, although Spire Winders are pretty good. If we go into white, we're not going to want Seafloor Oracle, River Darter, Looter. <laughs> I've just never liked Shipwreck Looter. Hmm. Not exciting. Definitely the biggest reason we have of playing blue is pairing it with white. And while all these cards are fine, they're not that late game power. All right, let's take a look at red. Actually, let's take a look at green because there is a possibility that, wow, look at all the different mana costs, that we go green blue. And if we can eliminate that possibility, then it just, it'll make it easier to think about. Yeah, just no green merfolk here. I mean, the. Jade Bearers are not good unless you really get there. Enter the Unknown, no. Naturalize, no. Plummet. Uh, the combination of Naturalize and Plummet is main deckable, but that's a, that's a different card. Hardy Veteran. Yeah, so while there's a few good payoffs here, it's just not that appealing. I'm not trying to win off Ancient Brontodon. Party veteran. Okay, so there's really no Merfolk, and there are a few good green cards, but it just depends if we have another deep color. Take a look at red. Another deep color to pair it with. Okay, red looks really good spells, but underwhelming creatures. I'm not a fan of the Raptor. Brazen Freebooter. Is totally fine, but not exciting. Same thing with the raptor, the other raptor. And just zero creatures here are great because Rigging Runner needs 
a critical mass of creatures to be at its best or have a bunch of one ones to face and that's just not the case here so if anything red is going to be a splash color off of treasures or something just play like the two lightning strikes but overall it is rather weak rather weak yeah and some of the cards can be totally playable like corsairs they, they just only get good when you have a critical mass of things to go with them so I don't consider them good on their own and black we've got plenty of time here if I had to choose right now I would just play a blue white deck that seems like the best direction and the blue white deck has Prosperous Pirates and Sailor of Means to potentially splash these lightning strikes. And the Reckless Rages are fine to splash too, they're just not quite as good, I would say. Wow, black has the most cards, but a lot of these cards are throwaways. In a super aggressive deck, like maybe there's a black red deck that can go Wanted Scoundrels, Freebooter. Order, just a, a red black pirate deck which makes these sure strikes better corsair stuff like that the vampire probably is not good enough in here unless we went black white still i'm drawn more to black or white blue here duress Arterial flow. I think we're just not vampire heavy enough. I would play the Dusk Legion Zealot in any deck, but it's not a reason enough on its own to play Voracious Vampire unless you have like three of them. Anyway, this does give us a solid curve. The average power level of the creatures isn't great, but together they're pretty powerful. Uh, the standouts being the Scoundrels, the Freebooter, the Impale. Double Tormentor is a big game. In fact, what we can do is quickly look at this combination here. Whoops, what am I doing? Okay, here is a reasonable base for Black Red. D sure Strike's great. It's better on charging monster swords and things, but just pushing some early creatures in can be fine. Not a huge fan of this. Pirate's Pillage. I guess that's okay. One Tetsumok short of a, a real deck here. We can do better. We can do better than that. So I want everything to stay put up here. You have to kind of keep columns open. But doing something like this. So looking at, finally at blue-white together, it's going to be this enchantment-based removal, combo of Crashing Tide Horn Swoggle, which can help deal with something once you're at six mana, or I suppose if we have a Merfolk in play, then we can do it at the end of their turn. Yeah, two Sky Marchers, some pretty good flyers here, double Sun Crested Pterodon. The only real finisher is Azor, and Resplendent Griffin is fine. At this point, we probably put in Divine Verdict. And then that's a deck. It's got some card draw. Yeah, not super exciting. Again, we could splash uh, Lightning Strikes in this version over less exciting cards like Sea Legs, although that is something nice to do early. And helps with the City's Blessing. All of our 
removal is pretty good for that. Not that we need that for so much, but the earlier you get a 3-4 out, the better. You know, in a deck like this, if the first card you play is a, a turn 4 flyer, it makes a big difference whether it can block a 3-3 or not. Not that you'll have the city's blessing on turn four, but the earlier you can get it as a 3-4, the better. Maybe we can cut Crashing Tide for a Lightning Strike. Bishop Soldier is good. Our early stuff is good. And maybe cut the Mist Cloak Herald too. If we had more Raid or a way to pump it up, it would be better. So it's just kind of sitting there doing nothing. It doesn't really help our game plan, especially now that we've cut Crashing Tide. So this would be a reasonable looking 23. Unfortunately, the fixing is still really bad. So I'm wondering if these Lightning Strikes are even worth it. Hornswoggle, Sailor of Means, Prosperous Pirates. And this is secondary way of fixing secrets. So we'd have to play something like two mountains. And that should be enough for these two cards. So let me take a look. That's even what it suggests. Eight, seven, two. Yeah, I like that. Oh no, it, yeah, anytime you add lands, it's just going to undo this whole thing. Sure, I didn't want those cards there, and I can't just sort this on my own later. Ah, Magic Online. It's like in real life, if you were to stack up all your cards, and anytime you, like, put a pile together, all your other cards would get sorted into color order again. <laughs> Stupid Magic Online. Well, how about this? Do you Do you like this? I think this looks good. It looks good enough. It's got a lot of answers. It has a lot of evasive threats in the late game and some good ones. Card draw, Azor to finish things off. What it doesn't have is a very good way of protecting Azor besides itself. Uh, it doesn't have a way of getting it back. It doesn't have a ton of good stuff, but it seems like about the best we can do here. It doesn't have fixing for the lightning strikes. But let me submit this. The other consideration would be to do a a black blue or black white deck. I still think black only has a couple reasons to play it. Like impale, freebooter, and the 4-2. Or pairing it with red, because red is quite powerful. Blue, blue has our two Spirewinders and Resplendent Griffin and Azor. So if we stack that up against double Reckless Rage and, and double Lightning Strike, it's similar. Oops. Oh no. Okay, get our snakes back in the deck. It's similar. Um, so the red-black deck might be another option, and a good option for a game one deck, if you just want to start with a, an aggressive deck. That is totally fine. I kind of like this because we have inevitability in the late game, and if we stumble, we can catch up and stabilize, whereas the the aggressive deck doesn't really have that option. It doesn't get to stabilize in the late game, especially with our options. We don't have a big finisher like a Tetsamok or an Atali or a big dinosaur like that. So this is a good version. Anyway, hope you liked my take on deck building. I'll try to show a few matches here, if not all of them, uh, just to yeah see how a deck like this will perform. Round one. Yeah, let's um, play first. It's an interesting decision in this format, but it really depends on how much early interaction you have. If you have just a ton of good early interaction, then you won't be worried about your opponent establishing a, a board quickly and you can go for it, but we kind of want to hit our stride and not be left too far behind. So being on the play makes sense. All right, our opponent. 
opponent has found a dinosaur deck. Fortunately, we have a great <laughs> guy to block this Raptor Companion. They can push through damage with some kind of trick, but this extra treasure is always going to keep them wondering. Oh no, the mirror match somehow, except we're not playing any Raptor Companions, that's for sure. Luminous Bonds. Cat's out of the bag if we play a Pterodon, but it makes sense just to curve into turn 4, turn 5 Pterodons. And it makes an even bigger wall for them to get past. Spuccio. Rocking Peacekeeper Avatar. Oh, Spirewinder. That's a neat one. We have two ways of dealing with it. Uh, we're in no rush, though, to get in two damage this turn. So, you know, if they misclick and block, or <laughs> if they misclick and fail to block, then <laughs> we get in two damage. So, you always make this attack. Even if it wastes half a second of your life. Sometimes it'll get in for two damage. What is this? Oh, come on, too many things to deal with. Good thing we have all the answers, right? Oh, I don't know. What do we do? We just have all our bounce, all our creatures bounce off each other every turn. I'm going to use Divine Verdict here. It gets in less damage, but at least, <laughs> at least it's good. I don't know. Yeah, Divine Verdict, and let's get the more expensive guy. If we draw land next turn, we can just lock down Spirewinder and something else. As a nice little offensive play. Prosperous Pirates. It's just like the same deck. Oh, there's the other advantage of killing the 2-5 is if they attack with Spirewinder, we have two blockers back to deal with it. Huh. What do we think? Methinks we get in two damage here. Play the Sky Marcher. Again, it's not the most damage we could be getting in, but be patient. Don't wor don't rush it. We're trying to establish a board that is superior, and it leaves us the out of next turn bonds and interdiction again. If we draw that land, we don't need land. I'd be happy drawing some action, but it is something to plan for. That's not good for us. I'm worried that they're going to put the lifelink enchantment on it that makes a little vampire dude not something good on its own, or not something we can't deal with. There's another way of looking at it, but it would be annoying. Anyway, this turn, get this guy out of the way and just come in with all our flyers. Worst thing that could happen is they have a pump spell and trade with one of our pterodons. Not trade, but trade the pump spell with it. Um, and we'll leave back the Luminous Bonds for the next big threat. Like, if they are playing Azor, there's one turn where you can't hit it with instants and sorceries, but you can hit it with lockdown like Luminous Bonds or Water Knot. That's a... <laughs> that's a place to put it. Why wouldn't they put it on Soul of the Rapids? Did they misclick, or did they think this is better somehow? Yeah, um, hmm. It, in some ways, it is better. It's 
And why would they attack into this unless they had a trick? They must have a plus two, plus two spell. Or their own divine verdict. Or they just want to kill Sailor of Means. Let's say they have plus two, plus two. Let's say they have plus three, plus three. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm actually just going to block this because at, what on earth I was thinking what was I thinking that if they use the trick there they keep their guy but then they won't have a trick for soul of the rapids and we can luminous bonds him if he's alive still very strange all I can think of is that they didn't mean to do that which is a weird little reason. Anyway, now we get in for six again. No reason to use bonds on anything. That's for any big flyers they could draw here. But if they put the Squire's Devotion on Soul of the Rapids, they just hold it back and we can't attack into it. Vanguard doesn't do anything extremely annoying to deal with early but once you have four toughness you're in good shape quality over quantity this is this is how you win games of magic i guess trading with soul of rapids reasonable plan there i mean it gives them an extra turn assuming we don't have another two three so this is it. What's your card? Their other option here is to get in a couple lifelink, which they could do, but they're just going to throw in the towel. Neat. Crashing Tide. The biggest fear is that they're going to make a, a hexproof Voltron, and there's just not much we can do about that. Short of that, we could put in Crashing Tide to break up any other kind of combo. Or Lightning Strike is just about as good at that. It's not very good at killing their their 3-4s and their 2-5s. But if we pair it with our Pterodons, it gets pretty good. You see how good the Pterodons were there. It's funny they're some of our few dinosaurs, but having both in play at the same time was nuts. The mana base really wants to be Obzon, doesn't it? We could play Galta, Impale, all kinds of good stuff. But then giving up on blue just hurts so much. All right, what else? Sea Legs seems good in this matchup. The looters, I don't know. I still don't like <laughs> like them too much. Let's submit like this. Okay. They're down to six. I'll keep this hand. With the the knowledge that if we never draw land, then we're in bad shape. But if we do draw any land, we're in fine shape. Early, and yeah, them being on the play and mulliganing does not help their chances. Sure, drawing their one of their only two drops does help their chances. Might be something we look to trade off with Resplendent Griffin. Oh no! Oh no, which one would we trade with? Oh, geez, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna play Martyr of Dusk here. It prevents more damage. Because what I don't want to happen is we play Resplendent Griffin and they just attack with Raptor Companion. Here, they could either, they probably just attack with Resplendent Griffin. Yeah, keep their permanent count high. But then, if we draw land, 
we've got Spirewinder. Nice. Yeah, and I'll just play that and pass because we still need Martyr back to block the Raptor Companion. There's no chance that they would block with it. Did we see what they were splashing red for? If it's lightning strike, I swear. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what I would say. Yeah, next turn they will have the blessing if they put the lifelink on Soul of the Rapids. That's a bit scary. That is a bit scary. I I guess we can get the city's blessing this turn if we want it. Or play Resplendent Griffin. No, I think we need the City's Blessing now because then we can block Soul and um, Resplendent Griffin if they come in, even if they get buffed up a little bit. And it has to make them think about what we could have with our treasures. So I'm hoping they don't have any boost effects here. And some of them wouldn't be the worst for us. But like a plus two plus two trick is still really bad for us here. Uh, bombard. That is kind of bad for us, but it it doesn't give them a, a turn with City's Blessing. So that's a plus. Land would be nice here. We would go... Yeah, nice. Uh, Griffin and Spirewinder. I guess we didn't need the extra land. I was thinking Suncrested Pterodon would be better, but it turns out Spirewinder is probably just better. Get in for three, why not? Yeah, the mulligan hurt them. The mulligan hurt them. And Secrets. Ooh, Secrets is good. Draw three. Just a you know casual draw three. The scariest things they have are not creatures, but Hornswoggle is good insurance, and we can hold up Spirewinder. Or Windstrider, whatever it's called. I don't even know what it's called. In any case, I am happy enough trading Resplendent Griffin with Soul of the Rapids. In fact, I'm happy enough trading anything off here. Is that crazy? No, it's not too bad. I'll just go for this. They can't kill us next turn. And if they're just going to take all of it, fair enough. Uh, Divine Verdict on Resplendent Griffin? Or Spirewinder? Yep, can't stop that. Ah, oh, what next? Let's see. Next turn, or we'll have eight, which is enough to do Windstrider and Hornswoggle. <clears throat> and we definitely want a blocker this turn. So let's grab a Pterodon, and that should stop their attack. Windstrider would be really cute if we could ambush a Resplendent Griffin before it gets the City's Blessing, but that's playing with fire. Generally, leaving the Flash creatures to the latest possible is, is the right play. Yeah, and they just can't attack this turn. So, land... We have good attacks. We're pretty good attacks. They can't. They can't really kill us next turn. So they need to consider double blocking something. I'd say we at least get five damage in here. 
And between Windstrider and Hornswoggle, we're in good shape. They'll take it all. All right. Cool. I don't want them to draw land. And I don't want them to resolve a creature. Ah, they got the city's blessing. Oh, well. Now, this is our last chance to trade with it. But they're at seven, and Windstrider might just be better to attack with. It could be lethal this turn. Hornswoggle, the second copy. Oh, this is getting good. And play three power. That might be it. Bombard. So they pretty much were playing the same deck as us. This is a light splash of red for removal. Shoot, if we drew our lightning strike here, they'd be even more dead. But what is the plan? Are they dead in the air? So we attack in the air, and they block a big one, they take seven. We could also attack with the Prosperous Pirates and Martyr of Dusk. They just have to lose. I'm just going to attack with everything. If they have a plus two, plus two pump, then they survive here. But if we also get this extra two damage in, then they no longer survive. And otherwise, they're just chump blocking the Prosperous Pirates and trading here. So they still survive here with a pump. But then they can only do three damage back to us, and we Luminous Bonds the Resplendent Griffin. The other way to beat the pump is just to Luminous Bonds the Cleric or something, but that also seems kind of bad. So this is a lethal... <laughs> this is a lethal situation. I assume they're going to pump the soul or die. Bombard this thing. So we have two lightning strikes. They have two bombards. And we get in for four, kill both of their blockers here. And we're left with two good creatures, and they have nothing, and no cards in hand. That's a good start. So now, if they have the lifelink spell, they can make a 1-1 lifelink blocker, and that's it. Sick. Okay, round one. In the mirror match. Took it down. Round two. Round two with this hand. I guess it's keepable because it has an early play. It's going to take a little more to get there. But as soon as we draw an island, we're in it. It fixes our colors, counters their spells, and shuts down some smaller creatures. Another mirror match? I wonder. It's a good answer to some of our early stuff, but our early stuff is just there to not die, and Snubhorn Sentry does not kill so quickly. Come on, really need that blue. Really need the blue soon. Oh, green-white. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Um. Certainly attacking here does nothing. If anything, it sets us up for a, a trick, and I don't want to get blown out. But we're going to counter this, assuming it's not an enchantment. Oh, come on. Yeah, so, ooh. What do we do? Yeah, I guess there's no point on them attacking, and sea legs isn't all that impressive either. Yeah, let's uh, pass it back here. Maybe they'll ramp into some big five drop that we can't deal with. Or can we? It's 
tyrant of Araska. Something, something big. Let's take it down. Exultant Sky Marcher. I'll counter anything at this point. That is a hard one to deal with. We really would have loved to catch something more expensive, but the fact that it fixes our mana here is also pretty exciting. Now we can carefully plan this out. If we use Prosperous Pirates, that's fine. That puts us up to seven permanents. Eight, nine. Then we're still not quite up to the city's blessing next turn. If we draw land next turn, on the other hand, and just play Sailor of Means, that is a bit better. Yeah, it, we're in no rush. We can't even attack past the Snubborn Sentry with our Prosperous Pirates. So let's just accumulate treasures. Hoard some treasures. In a lot of ways, the body is the same. A 1-4 and a 3-4. At least when you're defending. Sure, Cacophodon. Can't do much about that, and I'd rather have countered the Sky Marcher on this board. I guess Lightning Strike deals with it, and so does Sea Legs. Or so do Sea Legs. Eight permanents. Okay, not going to use that. Great. So, really close here. We could use Sea Legs and Secrets this turn, but instead I'm just going to do Prosperous Pirates and hold off. Now, if we sack three treasures, we're still not quite there, so let's not do that. Giant monsters incoming. Jadecraft Artisan, that does not really count as a giant monster. We should be able to hold off whatever they pump. <clears throat> No, I guess this number in century is pretty big at this point. A 4-7. And we only have 6 power on the field. Hmm. Coming in with both. I imagine this means they have a trick to back it up. Well, who knows. Do we want to block all of it, then they untap a land or something, or do we just take the extra damage here? Let's take the extra damage, and yeah, this block makes the most sense. I'll even try to use sea legs to, to save the first creature they put in the way. that leaves behind a permanent on our side. I still think they are likely to have a pump spell. The attack is still fine for them since they're happy to trade their Snubborn Sentry with our, our big guy, but let's put Sea Legs on Prosperous Pirates to bait the plus two plus two here. Cool. Yeah, that works out well. Twelve permanents in play. I'm not going to waste lightning strike here on anything. We can just take our time. Draw three. And that gives us red to leave up. And it also gives us Spirewinder. So this leaves up lightning strike if we're desperate for it. And it gets a it gets our own clock going. Yeah, and our board's hard enough to attack into that. I don't mind coming in for three here. Shoot, well, if, if these are the big high-end, top-end creatures of their deck, that's not too scary. Yeah, Glorifier doesn't change much. And that's it, so they're out of cards over there. 
and they have no defense for what we have going on. But we're limited to our air force now since Cacophodon is such a big blocker. Now I'm not going to waste a lightning strike on it. If we're winning in this state here, we don't need to to lose our insurance. Tender shoot dryad. Yeah, see, that's the kind of insurance we want, and we don't need to stop on their main. In fact, well, if they want to attack, we can do that. Dang. Thank goodness we have <laughs> thank goodness we have that in our deck. That's pretty good. Do we want to rock the boat now? No, we can't really tap down enough with the hammer skull, so let's just get in with our flyers. All of all of our flyers, all one of them. This pious interdiction is for Zatalpa. We're going to wait until they get their four, eight, double strike, hexproof, vigilance, trampled, flying thing. We're going to lock it down. They're still playing lands, although they have plenty of lands now to cast any giant monster in the format. Even Zakama here, they have just enough. The nine drop dino. We probably lose to the nine drop dino. That can even unlock itself from from anything but like arrest, I guess. But we don't have arrest, we just have pacifism. Not much of a sideboard. Still, we need ways to deal with with some of their more problematic creatures. So it could be worth bringing in Reckless Rages. Hornswoggle will be good. Reckless Rage uh, and Sailor of Means, that's a nice little combo. Divine Verdict. Take out one of those, maybe. Everything else is still good. One thing I don't like as much is Territorial Hammer Skull, but it's still a creature. It's still decent. Okay, so if we do this, we might want to put in one more mountain. We'll put in a, well, same art, I guess. What did we do here? So now we have a couple ways of dealing with their <clears throat> instant ways of dealing with tender shoot dryads, and that's so important. Divine Verdict is still fine. Hammer Skull is at least something to do early that they can worry about. What else did we have a problem with? Was Divine Verdict going to be good here? Nah, I'll do it like this. And I took out blue because our heavy white early is kind of what we need. Secrets we can do on turn whatever, and then our big flyers and stuff can be later. Hornswoggle and Sailor of Means, they're just single blue. Eight, six, three. versus seven, seven, three. Yeah, I like it. Yep, looks like we have all of the colors we need here. And a couple nice threats and uh, bonds to lock down Tender Shoot Dryad while it makes a million tokens. Right off the top. Nope. Yeah, I don't need any more planes. And we have four good red spells in the deck, so we don't want to draw those either until we get the source. Party veteran. Not bad. That'll bounce off our Sky Marcher for a bit. Two of everything. Two planes. Another two planes. Two Sky Marchers. Two bonds. Two islands. Or just one. Anyway, that's a Conseer. What do we do about that? I guess we just hope to lock down whatever it plays. Now they can get 
a big guy out as early as next turn, like the Tendershoot Triad, and we have no way of dealing with it for a while. Yep, I guess they're not doing that this turn. Just another big monster, a grazing whiptail. Let's lock that down. Well, I, hmm. So we can do two things next turn regardless. I'm gonna do another Sky Marcher here because it stops them from attacking with these two guys. So we take a bit more damage this turn, but we also have the option of double blocking the Whiptail, which doesn't seem so great. Bonds is fine. So we take five here. But next turn, it's two things, and we shouldn't be taking much damage after that. Bonds this guy. It's not the biggest guy in the world, but we can bonds whatever else they have coming up. And now we can double block whatever they attack with. Do we have a way of dealing with a bonds? I think we don't. We took out our bounce effect. Took it out of the main deck, that is. Huh. All right, we're gonna play this game. This game of drawing planes. Fine with me, as long as we're not taking any more damage right away. Snubborn Sentry and the City's Blessing. Is that another one we have to bonds? Kind of. Well, hold on. So we have four, six, we have the City's Blessing. I hope. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What if they have Pounce? Then they take away the city's blessing. Yeah, that would be a little too greedy to try to draw a red here, because we probably don't need Reckless Rage right away anyway. So yeah, and we do draw the red, but I, I think that was a safer way to go in the face of Pounce, just get our extra card. And now... And now I like passing back. Save Luminous Bonds for Galta or Zatalpa or whatever Alpa you want. And the plan is to double block Snubborn Sentry and lose the Sky Marcher, but gain two. Maybe they just attack with everything, in which case, I guess that's still the play. Or no attacks. Hey, leaving up four mana was like, <laughs> representing Divine Verdict or something. And now they don't have great attacks. Back to us, giving us an attack into them, and attacking this into Divine Verdict is whatever. I mean, it's late enough in the game we have to deal with it somehow anyway. So attacking with our worst flyer is reasonable. I wouldn't attack there if I didn't have something to kill a creature, because... They could draw a way to fight through some of our good blockers here. Like, if they simply draw another Luminous Bonds, then their attack gets really good. And we do not need to use Lightning Strike if they're not forcing us to. Gotta love that Secrets of the Golden City. My goodness. Okay, give them their divine verdict again. Our blockers should be good enough that I like getting in this extra damage. But I'm not going to attack with both flyers. We could attack with both flyers. But then we're guaranteed to need one of our burn spells. And I just want to use them reactively. And for 20 life, sure, we attack with both. But we're low enough that we'll take it easy. 
plummet. That's a good one. Good one against us. Plummet our flyer. What nonsense. I'm glad I attacked with um, that one so they don't plummet and attack. I'm play another blocker so we can start using up our exultant sky marcher. Sounds good. Sounds good. Catching up. It's neat to have a little dude back with a pacifism on it because there's no fear to reckless rage at. Oh no, what's this? Something kind of big. Five mana. Sunrise Seeker. Do I care about that? A little bit. Lightning Strike, you can, I mean, it's better than Reckless Rage in that you can com, uh, you can point it at your opponent. The game's probably not going to come down to that. And I just want to be able to have the, the more damage and kill a, another blocking creature. Dismiss that. Yeah, Adondo Vanguard's just about the worst creature against Sailor of Means. Unless you can give it lifelink or something. That'll be it then. I can't imagine them attacking into this. Not if their top deck was Sunrise Seeker. It doesn't change enough. Cool. And we still have our aggro plan in full force. We would have killed them in five turns if we kept the lightning strike. Now it'll be six more turns after this. Another Sunrise Seeker to Endershoot Dryad. Glad I saved the Reckless Rage. So what I don't want to see is a plus three plus three spell. Short of that, we deal with this bugger. And he's not a dinosaur, so he doesn't come back with the seer. Good stuff. I am so grateful to past Bill who put Reckless Rage in the deck. As good as this looks for us, if they get six power and toughness every turn, it's going to go south real quick. Sky Marcher. Uh, I guess we need to throw the bonds on that thing. Or some interdiction. It's more expensive. It's a, an effect that's going to last us. Naturalize already would have gotten us in light of other things. Yeah, we're not ready for an alpha strike here. We could attack and get in five when we do that. So we can only really consider that when we five, six, seven, maybe seven. Actually, next turn, if we don't think they have anything, we could use bonds and go for an alpha strike. I'm in for it. I'm in. It's a little risky, but it is super lethal. And we're at high enough life here. So we tap down the 2 3, and they block our biggest thing. This way, they can't kill our Hammer Skull. They've only got one card in hand. And that. Adds up to seven, last time I checked. Nice. 2-0. Oh. Hello and welcome to round three. Yeah, this hand works. We are 
on the play here against Heinhoi. So, yeah, we don't need anything right away. In fact, the Hammer Skull will go a long way to block the Aspirant early. And then if anything goes too poorly, we have Luminous Bonds and things. Yeah, Hammer Skull, double white. We've already opened up against three white players. Another white-green player. Cool. That might be something we can ambush with Wind Strider. So let's have that as plan A. Tap down the Sky Marcher. And then, yeah, I'm happy to trade Martyr of Dusk with uh, the Aspirant. Because then we don't have to worry about its flying later. And puts them lower for ascend, so I just don't think they attack with it. We take the hit here. Now there's so many tricks that'll stop a player from attacking when you're holding up four mana. But we're just gonna we're just gonna hold up the mana anyway. I mean worst case scenario we play a three three. Best case we play a three three and kill their guy. And they don't know, maybe we have a handful of exultant sky marchers. Oh, they're coming in. They're coming in with everything. Well, not everything, but some things. So that could mean they have a trick, but it's still worth going for. It prevents some damage. Nice. Ha, ah, too late. We already got our value. Then what? Luminous bonds on the champion? Not a huge fan of it. I mean, maybe that is our best option. Let's do this. Let's attack with everybody. Tap down their last blocker, even though I wouldn't mind them blocking with it. Um, don't give them the option. If they know it's right to block with it, for some reason we don't know, then they'll block with it. But yeah, let's lock down this guy. If we put the sea legs on the Everdon champion, it still becomes the best... O2 blocker in the world, like a grounded fog bank. And the Aspirant is something we can just put sea legs on here if we want to. I'll take a hit with it first because we don't know if the sea legs is going to be better. This is interesting. They have five mana up. If it's something like a Wind Strider, well, not a Wind Strider, but. I mean, we can't beat Divine Verdict. But if it was a big dinosaur they flashed in, bam, Hornswoggled. There's a dinosaur that we can't counter here, which is the Mythic from Ixalan. But any other thing we're going to be able to counter. And that means next turn, Azor. I'll take one more hit off this guy. Land, any land would be good. Otherwise, we should have good colors to bring out Azor here. This thing gets locked down by enchantment removal like Luminous Bonds. They've already used one, they've only got a couple cards, and even if they do that, they're at four life. Nice. Good old Azor. We haven't yet used the ability in this tournament. But I mean, we would have or could have in that game. Reckless Rage. So we did something where we absolutely needed removal for a specific creature in the last match. So we brought in a couple of Reckless Rages, went up to another red source. Uh, that doesn't seem necessary here. I like all the main deck cards we have going on. It gives us more early interaction. And hands like this. This is fine. They're down to six on the play. Always good to see when you're trying to win. So 
So our first blue is going to be good. Our second blue will also be very good. And if we keep drawing white, we'll just have to deal with it. They put a card on the bottom. Oh, that's perfect. Blue off the top. Things are going well. So far, so good. Oh, no. And they have Prime Blade, but they can't even equip it this turn. So what do I want to trade? I would much rather trade Martyr of Dusk for this thing. And since they are stumbling on lands here, um, they really want to hit with Prying Blade, so stop that from happening. Sky Marcher versus Hammer Skull. Hammer Skull is not as good as it used to be, and in our deck, it's um, also not very good. They've got their own Sky Marcher. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, let's just try to shut this game down. If we play the Pirates, they get in for three here in the air, but then we've got Azor next turn guaranteed. Actually, uh, yeah, actually I've changed my mind on that. This turn, I'm going to run out Suncrested Pterodon to block the 3-3 flyer, because this can bait out the removal. If they have a pacifism, they slap it on the Pterodon this turn, and then, yeah, sure, we take three, but it means they're much less likely to have the second piece of removal. Yeah, there's the bonds. And then Azor is just completely blanked by, by that, and that's what's going to win us this game. Shoot, well, I guess I should have played Sky Marcher early. <laughs> I thought we'd have time to play our Flyers. Just have to hope that Azor is enough here. Should be. Yeah, if they have the second Luminous Bonds, they have it. Not much we can do. Yes, we got there. Okay. So then, how much do we want to invest on Azor? Three, four, five. Gain two, draw two. We missed our land drop, so that seems safe. And then we can play one blocker, so yes, and then two. Just about perfect. This, um, whatever it is, Divine Verdict or something? Or are they just bluffing it? Wing Shards. Settle the wreckage. Thanks, I think. That's pretty good here. So he ended up getting us two cards, a land, and to settle the wreckage out of our opponent's hand, So and two life. So that is all totally acceptable. We'll get one of our mountains, play a land. And last but not least, Shoot, what do we do here? Get a Sky Marcher into play. This this is fine. This means they can't attack with the Aspirant, and we can use Sea Legs on the Sky Marcher. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Okay. So block here, F3, I think I have six there, and then Sea Legs on their guy, just so it doesn't do much for the rest of the game. And we don't take any damage that we don't have to, because we're ahead on cards by a lot. Pretty soon Resplendent Griffin is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Might as well just lightning bolt that thing. No reason to give it away yet, what our 
secret plan is. And they've still got a lot of cards. I guess that's due to not having any lands to play ever. Is it time to strike that thing down? Or just trade with it? I'm happy enough trading with it since they have an 0-3 blocker. And then we'll just win off the wings of Resplendent Griffin. Oh, so many lightning strikes. Very nice. Let's come in here. We can tap down... Oh shoot, what do we tap down? Let's tap down the Sky Marcher. Because if they go in for a double block on the Hammer Skull, then we kill their Hexproof guy. Yeah. I mean, it's not great, but it's fine. And they take a bunch. Sure. Sure. I don't want this thing to live. Ah, let's just lightning strike this right away. Could have done that on our turn to prevent them from saving it with a trick and still getting the treasure, but I don't want them to get a treasure here, so uh, six, seven, eight, we get in ten or eleven next turn. Or twelve. <laughs> it keeps going up. Uh, if you keep counting, the number keeps going up, I guess. So we just need to draw a third lightning strike and we've got it. And they have to miss on creatures. Really not the best draw for them, but since they don't have many lands, then their hand is just a ton of different options. So it's not like they've had nothing to do here. And they've had some powerful options to get rid of our Azor. I wonder about that, since these modal abilities have a lot of different options on any given turn, it's hard to tell what is the correct thing. Oops. How did... So I F6'd on their turn, and then they played this, and I was trying to F6 through it, and then I F6'd on my turn by accident. I don't know, that weird stuff always happens. Let's just leave back all the really good blockers and get some good damage in here. So we tap down Kinjali's Collar. This should be lethal in a couple turns. I expect this turn they don't block. Next turn they just reassess. And we've got big old Spirewinder to help block the 2-4 Kinjali's Collar that might come at us. Five mana now. Equipping Prime Blade is not free. So what's it going to be? So that's the first step. They've got Prime Blade on the collar, and they pretty much have to attack here. So let's give them the options. We're Going in for the block. We block with everything. Then a pump spell kind of punishes us, but I don't want to be hit. And if we can kill that, then all the better. Cool. 3-0. So we need to win one of the next two. The deck's strong, and we should be able to manage it. Stay tuned. Round four versus Loki Strikes. Another two lander, but yeah, pretty much I usually keep two landers. They're a little easier on the draw because you get 
you know, one more chance to hit your third land drop. But we're not, I mean, this is an expensive hand, but it's not ridiculous. And maybe sea legs will help us out. And if they're playing a slow deck, we should get there. Yeah, that was a perfect draw. And that's a good chance of drawing land. So it's not the luckiest thing in the world. Sometimes I do get punished. Sea legs that thing. Yeah, it keeps our uh, permanent count high. And I'm not sure if we have a better chance soon, so might save us six damage or something. Imperial Ceratops into their hand. Some decks have a little trouble with that. Not our deck. Oh dear. Uh, Pious Interdiction doesn't do it. We want to keep hitting our land drops, so it's time to cast Divination. That's part of the power of the card, is you can just do it on turn three when you need. I'm not going to sit back and block the Seer. I think they probably need it for mana anyway. If they want to get Ceratops down or whatever it is. All of these white-green decks. It's not my first choice if I'm looking for a deck to play. What are we supposed to do this turn? We have several options. I think just playing a bunch of small creatures is our best option, getting in damage. Now we'll take a hit of three from the Ceratops, and then if they tap down the Seer, we might also use Pious Interdiction to get in a hit of six, or Pterodon, or Azor. All of this is reasonable. So maybe they play a 6-6 six, six here, and then Interdiction is going to be the key. Oh, Golden Guardian. Down to two cards in their hand. I want to draw land here and get Azor going. This is going to backfire if they have some enchantment-based removal. But if they don't... Ayy. They also have two... This is a neat combo, the Ceratops and the Guardian. They can just ping the Ceratops and gain two life every turn. Oh well. So I want to get one hit in with Azor here, gain three life, draw three cards, and if, <laughs> if they don't deal with it, we're definitely winning. And if they deal with it here, that's going to be rough. But I guess we're on the back foot enough that we just say, opponent, you, you have to have it or you lose. Because we give them time to develop their golden guardian army, gain some life. Yeah, it's not great. Or play it later in the game when they've drawn five more cards and are more likely to have answers. Because even playing Suncrested Pterodon doesn't force them to have an answer. Is this going to be it? Four mana? None of their... Yeah, Hunt the Weak could be something they have, but that... Well, first of all, they can't play it. And second of all, it doesn't kill Azor with anything on the field. Yeah, they can't play it this turn anyway. Yeah, it looks like it might have been a Hunt the Weak. So to some extent, I can play around that from here. But let's just go nuts and fill our hand up. They could have Divine Verdict, but we'll still get our big Azor trigger. And they're going to unlock Golden Guardian maybe, but that's still slow enough that it's not too scary. Let's just go for the full value here. Puts us at 21. It fills our hand back up. We drew a land for this turn. So it's not the end of the world that we can't find another one. They do have to lose a creature if they want to flip the Guardian this turn. They gain two life off Ceratops and then kill their own Stalker. 
Or they could gain four life and kill their Ceratops and then get it back later. It'd be funny if they fought their um, 01. No, they fight the healthy 2 1. Cool, but yeah, if they use that, that's an expensive card to use next turn. They'll only have three or four mana up after making a 4 4. And then what? They have a 4 4, which can't block our 8 damage in the air. So they'll go to 8. They have no more fight spells for Ceratops. Actually, they could have Hunt the Weak and then. And then they go up to 10 here. So that's not lethal. Well, we'll take this. That's, <laughs> that's not really a hard decision. Not hard for us. I mean, we're not attacking on the ground, so them getting some extra damage in is totally fine. Two white, eight mana here. It is a Tulpa. So they're dead. We've just got the interdiction for it. They wish they had it. <laughs> Not everyone can have it, just us. Only I may have it. And then Hornswoggle, I guess, would have been good for that if we needed it, but we don't. Attack for eight, no. Lethal. We finally met our Zatalpa opponent, and our deck is really well set up against it. Lightning Strikes aside, it has Luminous Bonds, Luminous Bonds, Pious Interdiction, Hornswoggle. However, we need something that can kill a 4-4. What do we need? We need some different stuff. I'm going to redo this deck slightly. Divine Verdict is not good against most of their threats. I want at least one more Reckless Rage and possibly a Crashing Tide. Because Crashing Tide Hornswoggle could work <laughs> on some combinations. Sea Legs is fine. Uh, two Reckless Rages could be excessive. If we play it like this, the two mountains is enough. And then we'll just submit like this. Yeah. Just our little custom tailored deck to mess him up. Or maybe we take out another Lightning Strike and put in the Reckless Rage over it. Overthinking it. To give us two outs to the Golden Guardian because none of the interdictions do it. So we beat it by racing it. Soldier. Soldier, sailor, tinker, spy. I don't think that's quite it, or <laughs> something like that. This In this game, it is. So what is our next step here? It's going to be Sailor of Means and they're getting a forest, fair enough. They've got lots of expensive stuff to do. Sailor of Means, I don't want to have to use Sea Legs here. But I will, if they have a really good trick. It looks like this attack does not mean a trick. We could stop them from gaining two life by wasting a treasure, but I really want that treasure. I really want it, and the Sea Legs are going to be better on Guild Grove Stalker here anyway. So, the next step is Exultant Sky Marcher, holding up Sea Legs and to a lesser extent Lightning Strike. 
So I expect them to get zero damage in here. And we're putting them towards the city's blessing, but that's far less valuable. For them, since we have a good blocker for a 2-1 flyer. Or rather, plenty of good blockers for a 2-1 flyer. Blue off the top. Red also works. Not as good as blue, but totally acceptable. Yeah, come in here. It's a little harder to play around Windstrider since we've only got one blue up. They haven't seen it yet. And they might think we're just ready to attack and hold back Sailor of Means or have a Divine Verdict. Like, Windstrider is 10 times worse for them right now than Divine Verdict. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'll still go for killing this. And if they have a plus two, plus two pump, well, if it's the one that gives first strike, it still won't kill both creatures. And if it's plus three, plus three, well, the bottom line is they don't kill both creatures, and they could trade a trick with the Wind Strider. But they don't have it, so they're just going to gain two life, and they have Carnage Tyrant. We have enough power and toughness to kill it, or trade with it, or whatever you want to call it. Six, seven, eight, nine. Ugh, we don't have enough permanence. No, we do have it because of sea legs. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we need to play our land first because we're losing a treasure to play secrets. Cool. And they didn't have the trick last turn. So what are we going to do here? Let's just pass and plan on try blocking the tar <laughs> the Carnage Tyrant. Carnage Tyrant, huh? And Zatalpa? Their pool must have been easy to build. It was a sort by rarity. Then hide black cards, hide blue cards, hide red cards. And there's their deck. No, they still have red. Okay, so they've got some neat stuff going on. And this means they have a sure strike or something stupid. Really now. God, well, it's not going to get any easier. Let's try it. <clears throat> if they have lightning strike, then they get a three for one. or Bombard, or Plummet even. Well, that was a good game. That was a real nice game. If we draw a 6-6 six, six here, I guess there's a chance. <laughs> All of these removal spells that do nothing against the Tyrant. Nothing against the Tyrant. Interdiction, just for good use of mana here. And they're bound to attack with it. So we've got two hits off of the Tyrant. Chump blockers are not really an option. It's pretty much draw Azor to try to trade with it. Fortunately, we've been digging a little bit. Um, this might help eventually. So if we boost the Griffin up to a 3-3 here, get him boosted. Get him boosted up, then maybe we can block the Tyrant next turn. Assuming no more plummets or what have you. Or a pump spell here would also kill us. Lightning strike. No. Dang. So now we have to block the Carnage Tyrant and find another Spirewinder or equivalent to survive next turn. Ouch, 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 ouch. Okay. Not a good situation. Four, and we take four next turn, so I'm just going to concede here. Carnage Tyrant. 
Divine Verdict doesn't touch that. Martyr of Dusk doesn't really do it. I mean, maybe you're supposed to wait and not triple block. That doesn't sound like a winning line to me. Sure Strikes are possibly very good against it. Maybe we need to re-evaluate our color choices or just spread it spread it out a bit more. So Sure Strike, Lightning Strike can come out for Reckless Rage. I like that change. And then we'll have to remove blue here to put in a third red. Now, why Sure Strike over Lightning Strike? That seems way worse. Uh, that's just going to be because if we double block the Tyrant with two 3-3s three and they kill one, then the other one will get in there and, and just kill it because you know, First Strike beats Trample. Cool. Uh, shoot, Hornswoggle does not even beat it. But it can beat other stuff, and the Luminous Bonds are fine for some of the other creatures we'll encounter. Ha! Huh. Tough opponent! Yeah, now we just won't draw any lands. It's already hard enough without drawing poorly. But we'll add that to the mix. Here we go. So far, so good. Get our Sailor of Means up, and then from there, anything we want. Black. Okay. Yeah, establishing a clock is better here. If they play a three drop dino and attack for three, that's good. But I think that's rather unlikely. See, they'll just play a one drop dinosaur, not a three drop. I was right. Getting destroyed. Yeah, it's still fine. Even given that they're doing this, we're probably better off. Yeah, like, I'll take another turn of doing the same thing, just to get hits in. Four, so five more hits like this, and we win. Windstrider helps quicken the pace. It's just a matter of dodging a giant monster next turn and the turn after. So they won't get the hit of three in here. They get a big old sun-crested pterodon. We can lock that down with the bonds. And then I expect they'll tap out. I expect they'll tap out next turn. So having the sailor mean, sailor of means back to block the the Drover of the Mighty is not so important here, because they're going to get their 7-6 in play. And how did I know they had it? It's because of course they had it. <laughs> you know, of course they have it. Why would it be easy? Of course it's not going to be easy. So they can attack for 10. Let's see, we get them down kind of low. Four plus seven, and they're going to do 13 plus whatever. Thirteen puts us at four, and then we have Reckless Rage and Sailor of Means back to block. As it turns out, Sailor of Means might be our best bet. Check this out. Sailor of Means, kill the Drover, which keeps them off of the city's blessing, possibly. They have seven here. So if they play land and creature, then they don't have this entry. 
and then it takes three hits of the Carnage Tyrant, but we kill them in two hits in the air. So we put them to six and then a negative one. And it also keeps them off Zatalpa, which would mess us up. So two turns away from Zatalpa. That's a Conseer. God, that's really good with the Tyrant, and it means Zatalpa could come in next turn. Uh, Sailor of Means on here, that's why we played it. Thank goodness. I mean, we'd be at four life right now if things went a bit differently. So I'm just really hoping we're not dead next turn. But if it is Zatalpa in their hand, we don't have enough damage to finish it. The, and they, all they have to do is have a land drop here, and they have Zatalpa. And you know why they have it? Because of course they have it. Game one was Zatalpa, game two was Carnage Tyrant, game three is just going to be both. Is this after they took a hit? Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. No. Maybe they're finding Zatalpa with Commune or land so they can get her next turn. I am so sad right now. Thank God. Ha! Take this. <laughs> if we lose our flyer, that's not going to be good. But if we go to three, um, and they have a blocker, draw a removal. No, no. So now we can't even attack here. But all is not lost. No, everything's lost. Everything's lost. We lost. If we drew removal there, we attack for six and win. But since we drew an island and not one of our eight pieces of removal in the deck, then I guess we're screwed. Yeah, we tried. So what's our best bet? <laughs> what is our best bet? Our best bet is to pass here, leaving up our island and hoping they misplay. Because if they attack with everything, they win. Because Carnage Tyrant is way too big. And if they don't attack with everything, maybe we're fine. But yeah, they just have it all. Carnage Tyrant, Plummet, just a bad time for all of our stuff. We'll pass here. I want to see what the next card is, just in case. Just in case. No more islands. All the islands. I wonder, even something like a creature might have saved us. If we had four more toughness, let's say. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, then we can put three creatures on Carnage Tyrant, the Sailor of Means on the Snubborn Sentry, and take two. And the Tyrant nine kills two creatures, and we're alive. But it wasn't meant to be, so we have to win the next one. Round five. I've had to keep the suspense going, so... Three and one. Have to win this to get that qualification. But good hand, good start. Early griffins are kind of funny because they're a little easier to kill, but start with that. Nothing else to do. Red, white. So every single opponent has had white, and we have white. It's just the color to be. It does have a lot of common removal. So it looks like some kind of aggro deck here. Sea legs, don't be tempted to put that on a trailblazer. It just makes it stronger. And it doesn't get us the blessing. So let's just keep developing. And they're a little behind getting their two drop on turn three. 
Maybe Verdict will be good this game. So land would be nice to see. Short of that, we can just start putting stuff <laughs> places. So maybe Bonds on the Trailblazer and Sea Legs on the Armasaur makes sense since we're mostly interacting in the air. We can save that as a trick. Wait, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it's not even close to the blessing yet. But if it was our 10th, we put that on first before attacking. Cutlass. Oh my. Um, well, that's good news here because we chose the right creature to bonds. They'll have to move that over to the Armasaur and they still only get one damage in here, which they're welcome to do or not as they please. Now we don't want to verdict it. And that puts us up to the blessing. Yeah, two fives better than a two three. Better use of our mana. And they're dead. I mean, if they don't find something to do, they can deal with one creature that buys them a turn. That definitely deals with one creature. Very good card. One turn too late on the Hornswoggle. But without a flyer, they're still going to lose here. Our best bet is keeping up Divine Verdict so we don't take a huge hit. Eight, and then even if they save it with something, the things that save it don't, don't do a good enough job here. So Verdict, because if they hit us and then have a damage uh, burn spell for four, we would die. So we better kill this before it hits us. Got him. All right. Game one. So one more like that, and we're all set. Their creatures are big, which makes me want Lightning Strike over Reckless Rage, because Rage doesn't even kill the six sixes. Anything else? Crashing Tide, or something to deal with a piece of equipment. No, let's run it back. And they're happy with the quick submission too. Yeah, this, this handle play. It needs to draw white eventually, but in the meantime, oh, there we go. In the meantime, we have Sailor of Means. Gosh, this start is beautiful. And that treasure could be used for Azor if we draw that and need another white Beautiful land. Burning Sun's avatar, though, that really messes us up. It caught us just on the turn where it kills the, the flyer. Buccaneers finding a plains. So what's our play? We'll keep adding to the board here. Come in for two. And crack that treasure. And now we have our force in play. We can use Pious Interdiction every turn. Or should we commit more? Now that thing's too scary. Let's just lock that down and swing for four. They might even trade now that they're losing a lot of life each turn. Firebrand doesn't do it on its own, and that doesn't do it against our bonds. 
Just go ahead and use those bonds now. And then, do we still want to attack with the Martyr of Dusk? I guess we do. Even trading it with a Firebrand is fine here. Wow, we just get in more damage, okay. Again, we just have to be careful on our creature types because Sea Legs is just gonna help them out. Yeah, Buccaneers, we know we have more bonds for that guy. And what they're going to be tempted to do here is use the Firebrand to finish off Sailor of Means, and we'll save it with Sea Legs. Right. Good value. Now we have a 1-6 in play. Still doesn't beat the bigger dinosaurs, but it's fine. And they'll waste a Lightning Strike on it. No, not on it, on our Flyer. Shoot. So no more flyer. But the spirewinder kind of takes the wind out of their sails. Now they might want to trade. No, they're still taking it. And if they attack, it'll tell us a lot about what they have. Cool, no attacks. And then divine verdict, oh man. Yeah, let's just do this and hold up Divine Verdict, because the Bonds is going to help us against um, the 6-6, six, six. and if they have some kind of weird trick here, we'll get them. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. This can help us look out for for their own combat trick. Like if they have plus two, plus two, and they might use it now. If not, we just want to kill the lifelinker. So we trade, now we get a one, one, and can get back for five. Armasaur, and our own pterodon. Yeah. Nothing to worry about immediately, so Put him down to four, lethal attackers next turn, and the bonds to back it up. Nice. All right, so four and one, and we got the qualification. And yeah, that was a pretty good showing of a, a sealed build here. Nothing too broken in our pool, but enough good stuff. And yeah, tying together a slight splash for cards that really came in handy. So hope you enjoyed it and good luck in your seals.